How you been? It's been like two years. Hey, I've been good, man. Yeah, it's been a it's been a hot minute. We've oh, been uh it's been so bright. Yeah, you're just out of practice, man. Oh, sorry if I look like I'm dead tired and like I've had 82 pounds of weed, which I don't usually do, but it's been it's been some time. How are yeah, the kids? Been, the kids are great. They're growing up. Uh, you know, Johnny set it off to college and oh, uh, it's it's crazy to think about it, you know? It's crazy how much time. Yeah, you know, we don't care about the kids. Oh. We don't. We do care about. Really silly. That we're back. What? That we're... Yeah. The, the we do care. I, you know, let's get it. He's Ryan. He's Brax. I have relinquished control of, of that intro to myself this oh. time, Delegated. Why is my iPad not turning on? We'll figure that uh -oh. out. There it is. I believe, as you can see... Uh, actually, they probably can't tell, but we're, yeah. in the, we're in the same spot that we were last Correct. episode, but we've... We have a new mixer since then. That was a whole headache to figure it out. It absolutely was. But now it's you know it's putting in its work. It's 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 mixing and doing what good. It, you're doing what it should be doing. There's still echo in the room. Sorry a about that. Bit, a little, a little bit. bit. Um, it'll be more noticeable in Chronicles. So we're gonna work on getting some stuff in the room to relax the echo. Um, but we took some time to figure out the crawl stuff because the the mixture was a pain. Then the universe did not. This is the episode that. Yeah. That the universe did not want us to record. No, they did not. My power went out. Which had <laughs> yeah. my my phone died and oh, that's why. Yes, yeah, so my phone was plugged in, but it was super low battery. Um, and then the power had gone out, so I guess my phone just ended up dying. Yeah. Also, this is the amazing. kid. It's Johnny. Okay, um, he's gone. But the ep today, this is a juicy episode, and it's, we've been wanting to do it for for a hot minute. Um, and we're, we're probably going to start, this is definitely not posted on a Tuesday, so we're going to no. probably start moving our date uh, just for ease of other things to so maybe Thursday, something like that. I know this is not Thursday when you're seeing this, so it's Friday, but yeah. uh, it's again, because it's the episode that the universe did not want us to, want to see the light of day. It genuinely did not. And we, like, I think after we did the review, it took yes. so much out of us for yeah. uh, Beyond Witch the Witch Light or whatever it was. It was a fun time. Uh, we were like, we want to do an episode where we're going to do a little bit more research here at the Dungeon Crawl. Which, we also hadn't know, taken a, a siesta, as they say, for like a year plus because we were, we were on a, we we were a roll. On roll. We were, we're on the banana. The episodes. We were. So in the meantime, uh -huh. quite... A lot of things, I would say, happened, came out. Jeremy Crawford. Oh, yes. Busted out into the internet and mentioned that they are indeed planning a revision edition. I don't think that was Crawford. But was it Crawford? No, it was a different guy. But well, he's, his he name is talk, on it somewhere. He has talked about it since. Yeah, yeah so that they, are, they have mentioned that a re revision, a, they didn't say the words 5.5e, but I mean, it's definitely not. I almost feel like they did. They did without saying it. Um, so there is a revision, there is an extension of, um, the, the word they use was backwards compatible. Now hold on, yes. Fifth edition. Don't cancel those Kickstarters. Hopefully right. backwards yes. compatible. Yes, yeah, no, they are. They did, they did say those words, backwards okay. compatible. The Kickstarters are going to be fine. Um, but this is what leads everyone to the right. idea that it's going to be a 5.5e edition as there was a 3.5 and then a 4.5 edition. So it's kind of an extension of that idea. Yes. Uh, which is something we've kind of been talking about if you go back, a little bit. Th those of you that are either just like binging straight through all of our stuff or your mega fans, this is what I personally have been requesting. Mm -hmm. A but, refresh, not an entirely new thing. Will this fix their problems? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, this this new edition, this extension of 5th edition, won't come out until 2024 yeah. for the 50th anniversary of Dungeons & Dragons. But there are some inklings. There are some small things that are being tossed into 5th edition now that will obviously carry over, but things that they're kind of show us where their headspace is at currently. Yeah. Um, for example, the thing we're going to talk about first, at least the thing that's on my screen, which is not on Braxton's screen. Well, it's, it is the first thing I've got up here. Oh, gotcha. Uh, is is the their thing. stat block refinements. That's the first thing we're going to focus on here, is their stat block refinements that they posted. Their sage advice that Jeremy Crawford put out. And he says this was something that they showed in Wild Beyond the Witchlight, which is true. Uh, we did see this. Um, and this is something that they have also taken and added into 
their new book, Fizz mm-hmm. Band, that's coming out at the end of this month, then Strixhaven, and all Smith's carrying it over to the big book that we'll talk about kind of at the end of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, Mordenkainen presents the Monsters of the Universe, Multiverse, sorry, which is going to be a big combination of reworks and new monsters and everything all mixed matched together using these new stat blocks. So... I want to harken back to our Pathfinder episodes. Uh-huh. There's a particular portion of those stat blocks that you really didn't enjoy. Do you remember what that was? Uh, tough to read. Yes, yeah, tough to read. Yeah, like all their spells read. and whatnot were organized weirdly. But this is a massive focus on what they're doing right now and yes. trying to make it more readable. Mm-hmm. So where Ryan already thought these stat blocks were much more easy to read, apparently they're focusing on improving it even Which, further. Which, I mean, we have talked about D&D is very much, 5th edition specifically, it's very much focused on novices getting new people mm-hmm. into the game. And it seems like 5.5 edition might be changing that, at least to an extent. These stat blocks might give you the opposite idea, but I, I imagine by combining everything together, reworking all the old stuff, all the boring stuff, as we would say, into stuff that they've been releasing recently, mm-hmm. which we find more interesting, more complex, will hopefully kind of change that yeah. spread. Um, Something but interesting. Different. There's a lot of stuff they've changed that you specifically have mentioned mm. in fifth edition. So the, one of the yes. first things they mentioned, actually, I think I did this out of order, but I want to talk about in this word in particular sure, tags. Yeah. tags. There are yeah. modifiers to creatures uh, uh-huh. that don't really interact with any sort of spells, things yeah. that are like elf, goblinoid, titan, etc. Things that don't have affectations or abilities that affect things. They're adding more. Mm-hmm. At first, you're like, wait, why would they do that? And then they say there's also going to be more things that will affect these tags. So they're going to become... Yes. Spe- I assume they're going to be spells, yeah. items that specifically uh, impact goblinoids or elves. They did mention that they... <laughs> the cats are standing they're immediately... In, for those of you that are audio, oh, they're standing Jesus. immediately in front of the uh, fill light. And they're got. cleaning each other. <laughs> they just say... Um, <laughs> but... Uh, not even remember. Oh, but they yeah. also mentioned, I don't know if it says here specifically, but somewhere else they mentioned, I think it's actually in the Travelers and Multiverse thing that we're going to get to later, the Under the Arcana. Yeah. Um, they mentioned that they're also going to be changing how many things are humanoids. Because um, currently a, there's a lot of humanoids out there. Because uh, it's kind of a catch-all term. Right? Well, I mean, I feel like it made sense. It was kind of you are one thing or not. You right, are a bipedal stand-up creature yeah. or you are outside of that. So I feel the change for this was kind of a cultural thing in particular. Yeah. Like what is human? Like, why are we calling things that are not humans in this category? Yeah, I think that, yeah, they were doing that because, yeah, you said the bipedal just looks like a human. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, of course, there's some spells that, like, for example, hold person would affect a humanoid while hold monster does not affect a humanoid. Yeah. So that's going to change this type of stuff. Um, but they mentioned in the book that's going to be coming out later, Monsters of the Multiverse, that that's going to be shown, that they're going to be having new spells and things that will hopefully adapt and fix those uh, problems. Are you kidding me? What? These two. Can you, can you just, just grab my like, scruff and pull. They're literally basking in the warmth of this LED light on the ground. And it is hilarious. So yeah, that was a really interesting thing to me. Yeah. I mean, I literally wrote avoiding cultural backlash. I don't know. Maybe that's not it. Uh, maybe they just want to diversify the tags there because it's yeah, a big, uh, chonky one. It definitely will um, make some waves yeah. because there are items and things they even mentioned here, items and things that only affect certain types. So this will have to be something they continue with and change. Um, those items or change those weapons and to add to those specific tags because otherwise it'll feel like there's nothing that affects a titan you know versus the other stuff yeah and a big reason i brought this up first is their whole philosophy of we don't want people to have to feel like they have to own so many books to be able to figure things out right and while the interaction with this seeing a tag and going back saying well this monster from you know player's handbook that's not directly addressed in 5.5 e which maybe they will include everything in it You'll have to go back and forth and say, Dean, well, how does, like, this thing's a humanoid, but it's not humanoid in here. Which rules are we going with? So interactions like that will be up to you guys. But I felt like that was a large part of it. And something else that was a big change in Wild Beyond the Witchlight and the books that are coming out is alignment. They said it took a backseat so they could retool it, so to say. He's yes. He's cat in a while. So alignment. Um, they've flat out said that unless it's a major creature, like a, a 
an NPC or something, mm -hmm. they're not really going to have an alignment. There might be suggestions. Uh, generic humanoids might bear the words any alignment, reminding the DM that such people have vast moral ranges. And you all who are involved in the community know exactly what this is going with and trying to alleviate the issue of. I think it's pretty okay. Um, yeah, this is something we kind of saw yeah. in Candlekeep a little bit, that they were doing more catch-all terms. This is any alignment, this is any evil alignment, that type of stuff. Um, so it's, again, I think a lot of the stuff has pros and cons. Yeah. Um, this I don't really have any cons with. Um, no. Because I've, I've always been someone that's like, I don't really care. I feel like alignment's not super important. Um, that might be, uh, I feel like every time we mention alignment, there's like some do an spells that matter. It, but, yeah. Um, alignment to me is something that uh, is it's more of a guideline. It's an important thing that you kind of, very easily say, okay, I know how to play a character that's like this. Mm -hmm. um, but I also don't think it should be super worried about. Yeah, I'm getting away from those sorts of adjustments. One of my favorite things absolutely is the divvying mm -hmm. up of actions and bonus actions. Yes, being able to easily see what this oh creature gosh. can do is very handy. Super um, handy. So I, I like having, it reminds me of the Matt Colville action oriented monsters where it breaks up their villain actions or their legendary actions and their reactions and stuff like that and bonus actions. So I, I really like that. It'll make it easier to just pick up a stat block and yeah. be able to run with it. If I'm not running a virtual tabletop that spoon feeds me literally everything, right. then in that case, when I look at a monster stat block and I get to spells and I'm like, okay, what can they cast? How often? How many spell slots they have? Uh, they directly address that by saying any spells that are bonus actions, they're chonking down in there. And you know what? Fuck it. We're removing anything that's not uh, a utility spell, taking it out because those are likely just going to be monster special actions. You know, why give them fireball when you could give them breath, the breath of Azatoth that they shoot out? And it does mm -hmm. a little bit of a different thing, but it's still effectively a fireball. How do you feel about that? Uh, I was about to say this is a problem, a big one. Yeah. Uh, for many different reasons. Um, I understand the intent behind it again to make it easier the sp whole spell casting stuff on sheets is oftentimes very difficult to to understand at least at first glance and for new dms because there's a section that has innate spells and then there's like warlock spells they can cast that type yeah. of stuff it can get a little tough to figure out you know what spell is for for what um the problem with this is that actions reactions abilities that interact with spells will now no longer interact with said action, bonus action reaction. So for example, this Breath of Azathoth that you'd be shooting off that's essentially a fireball, 8d6 or whatever the hell, now the sorcerer can't counterspell that because it's not a spell, it's an action. And that is, I mean, I'm sure the DM could say, yeah, sure, I'll allow that, but it, it rules as written, it is not allowed. Okay. There are no counter actions in D&D. Uh, &D. The only spells that appear in spell, so they've removed... And this was one of the weirdest things. The spell casting trait or the innate spell casting trait, it literally mm -hmm. did not matter. It was just kind of flavor. Um, hold on. Those of you that are typing the comments, yeah, it does I, matter. I, I would homebrew my own. Yeah. I, I would always ignore their yeah. own stat blocks. But. So the only spells that will appear in spell casting actions are ones that take an action to cast. If a spell requires a bonus action, blah, blah, blah. We're more selective about which spells appear in stat block. For example, spells that have non combat ability. And magic using monsters' most potent firepower is now usually replaced by a special magical action. Yeah. Maybe this was that thumbnail I saw on YouTube. Counterspell nerfed. That's Probably. what we're exactly talking about. Probably. Also, the cast just knocked down a very important item. Yeah, I didn't see what that was, but it sounded important. Continue. Oh, I see what that is. Um, yeah, so counterspell is definitely uh, going to experience some issues here. Um I would imagine that they're going to probably they're, reword they have it to a little it. bit. Well, you know, I'm fine getting rid of counterspell, but well, it's, I mean, not, it's, to, not to nerf the players. It's okay. I think if they would just say in the action, say, like have a parenthesis and say spell or something, just so the DM can allow the spell casting stuff or yeah. can allow the, the counter spells. Because um, otherwise I can see DMs, you know, at local games where it's like, oh, well, actually it's not a counter. It's not a spell. Oh, it's going to happen. So you can't it's turning into it. magic. But my biggest problem with it is, um, yeah, it's flavorful and cool. I like it. But how much easier is it to scroll down and see that this dragon can cast a fireball or having to read some flavor text just to understand effectively that this is just a fireball and you've just spent another 
five to 10 minutes reading this, however slow you read, I don't care. Right. Um, it takes a bit of your preparation time versus just seeing fireball done, cool, or um, breath of uh, annihilation does 66. Right. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. So I, I, I like the intent behind this. I think they're missing the mark. I completely forgot. I wrote here in my notes uh, that silence also isn't affected by this because it's. Okay. That, it, and they, I, I can't find it on here. I don't remember where they posted, but they posted a revised stat block that had this breath of Azathoth thing on it. Like, it was actually just a fireball. Um, there's no components attached to it, no verbal, somatic, anything along those lines. So that means silence doesn't matter. You can yeah. just still cast your crazy fireball spell, even though. I mean, it's not a spell. Um, slow also wouldn't affect anything along these lines because, again, it's um, not a spell. Um, and then the uh, feeble mind ability and the globe of uh, invulnerability, stuff like that. Uh, it's, a, it's a problem. The, the Mage Slayer feat, um, I think it's Damn. a feat. It changes a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things that are hit by this change. Um, and I imagine they're going to address all this stuff, at least in like a 5.5e, in 2024, but that's three years from now. Mm -hmm. If they're making this change now, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be reflected by these, especially if it's going to be in Fizban or it's going to be in uh, Strixhaven. Uh, the monsters of the multiverse. So there, there could be creatures that are affected by this that then players can't interact with because of this yeah. new spellcasting idea that they have. Uh, so that's that's like the biggest For controversial sure. topic to me. The For other sure. one is something that Kenneth, our friend who was on our previous episode, up, uh, mentioned to us or me when we were going to uh, a restaurant to just hang out for a little bit because it's mm -hmm. been a, a bit of time since we've done anything since that episode. And he said... Uh, Braxton, did you know that they're removing age from stat blocks? Uh, yes, we, we should get to that now. Because yeah. this technically is brought up in the Travelers of the Multiverse section. I think No, it is brought down right underneath it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's talk about that. So at, at first thought, at they, first removed a lot of stuff. thinking about it, it's like, why would they do this? You know, wh how much R&D or development or writing and whatever is this going to help them out with not having a, you know, these elves live from exactly maybe, you know, if they die of dysentery, 25 billion years to 89 billion years. And, you know, okay. what does that matter? Kenneth goes, it does matter. It gives you flavor, helps me world build. I'm like, okay, yes, it does. I get that. That's awesome. They've truncated it and said basically that creatures will fall into one of two categories, essentially kind of like a human style life cycle where they live for about a century. So a hundred years, or, you know, maybe they're like one of these more fantastical fey like creatures where they live for a few centuries. And mm -hmm. when you first read that, you get kind of this knee jerk reaction of, okay, so there's century living things and over century living things. That's kind of silly. Then you dig into it a bit more and they say that there will be clarifications on certain races saying that, they do live for this amount of time or whatever, a few centuries, but they're avoiding getting incredibly specific on it and not mentioning it directly in a stat block. It does seem like, what, who is this really helping and why would they do it? So do you have any guess as to why they might? I think the whole point of this and the thing that I have the most issues with that I'll talk about here in a moment, um, all fall into the same category of them wanting to be culturally sensitive Okay. Um, to not make generalizations, to, uh, but I think the problem with this is that they're taking it a step too far and then turning it into, <laughs> he's taking the cats out and they're banned. They were sunbathing. Uh, yeah, they were. Um, but they're taking it a, a step too far that they're now making everything more or less the same. Which to me brings up its whole new set of complications. As someone, I mean, I am not a diversity expert, but I am currently with, am I. I am currently within a counseling diversity class where I've learned all sorts of fascinating details about being diverse and making sure you're culturally sensitive. I think this is just as bad as being culturally insensitive by saying everyone is the same. And the reason why I say this, because the age, sure, that's a problem, whatever. It's not as big of a deal as this next section. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the size, <laughs> height, and weight section. I don't Oof. know if it's, it is here. Yeah, player characters, regardless of race, period, regardless of race, typically fall into the same ranges of height and weight that humans have in our world. In full stop. And th there's more, but it's like if you want a random weight, yada, yada, yada. That's a problem because a dwarf is not going to be the same height and weight as a regular as a, as a person in our world. A elf will probably be taller, an Aarakocra will probably be taller, 
a, I mean, for example, in this new Unearthed Arcana, Travelers of the Multiverse, there is the the GIF, or there was a GIF, yeah, the GIF, sorry, GIF or JIF, um, Hippo. The hippo is going to weigh more than an average human in our world. I, 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 again, I think they brought this because of, you know, being culturally insensitive, not making generalizations and saying all dwarves are this high and that type of stuff. It could be, literally be as simple as giving us ranges. Dwarves range from this height to this height, that type of stuff. I mean, again, a fairy, a, a goddamn fairy that just came out in which light is not going to weigh the same as an average human in our real world. I don't understand what the point of this is. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think about the specific wording and maybe I shouldn't scrutinize it this much, but typically fall into the same ranges in height and weight that humans have in our world. They don't say the average height. They don't say the typical height. They just say ranges, yes. which means from the smallest human that has ever existed to the tallest human that's ever existed. That is possible. Nothing outside of that, whatever. So there was a meme that happened as well that centaurs can ride other centaurs because they're medium sized. And it says in the centaurs stat block that you can have any other medium sized humanoid or medium sized yeah. creature right on your back. So there's just, it's just hilarious. So I don't know, um, weird. Yeah, I, I think as, as Goo Cube says here on Reddit, <laughs> shout out to Goo Cube, Goo Cube um, this is making it very homogenous. Yeah. And I, 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 again, I think they're trying not to step on anybody's toes, but by doing this and making it everyone homogenous is the exact same thing as saying everyone should look like this or everyone is this. Everyone acts like this. Everyone looks like this. Everyone stands this height. Everyone weighs this weight. I mean, that's, that's worse to me. Yeah. So trying to think about it as a, from a gaming perspective, uh -huh. do you think maybe they just want playable characters i know exactly what they did maybe they want playable characters to be only medium that's it so well, small, balance wise so it's funny you mentioned that because i was curious i made sure I, I checked here and i didn't know this small and medium take up the same space they're both five by five um so the only difference being a small creature can hide behind a medium creature in combat and that okay. type of stuff so there's no real difference in being a small creature or being a small player, you know. So I I don't understand what their what the point. And there are large is. races, right? I don't possibly, uh, at least not like in the basic handbooks and stuff. Do they even say medium in the new stat blocks? Maybe they're just trying to avoid adjectives and their connotation. Am, nope, medium humanoid. Yeah, really should still that. have that, I would imagine. Okay, I don't know. This is the most baffling one to me, by far. Yeah, I, I don't know what this is trying to help, what this is aiming to do. Uh, it, it's mind-boggling yeah. to me. Okay, so I kind of think we went well over the stat blocks. Yeah, I'm, we going I'm, to I'm next? checking here just to make sure. Um, <clears throat> I don't think anything in here would be large. I think everything is either medium or small. Um, you can't, I mean, do you, do you imagine a loxodon that weighs the same as a human? I don't, yeah, uh, it's absurd to me. Um, Grung. yeah, there aren't any that I would imagine. Okay, well, the centaur is not even in them. It's there's like two races that would be adjusted by it, but it just feels weird and unnecessary. Yeah, so we'll see. Okay, next, there's a couple things we can go up to. There's the thing that wizards is hiring for there is uh, yeah. the new book what else uh do you want to go through the art arcana now you want Woo, to baby on arcana let's do okay. it so it kind of it does lead into what we were talking about talking about the lifespan because so they do go over the all that again uh at the beginning of the Unearthed yeah. arcana and this is for those of you uninitiated just came out Unearthed Arcana, Travelers of the Multiverse by the one, the only, Christopher Perkins and Jeremy Crawford. Let's go. Um, so first glance, there's an Astral Elf, an Autonome, a GIF or a GIF, a Hado Z, Plasmoid, and a Three Kreen, which, again, for those of you who aren't aware, this is ringing all the bells, ding, 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 for Spelljammer. Mm -hmm. Spelljammer 2022, baby. Let's go. Damn. Okay. So that sounds fun. Many of these races are in spell jam. A lot of these words I don't know, like a gif, I guess. Um, hippogriff is the only GIF. time I've ever heard of it. A hippo-headed being, a G it's a gif. Uh, Let's not do that. No, There's no peanut butter. Have you read it? it? You don't. 
read the just read the first uh read right uh split the two camps depending on how their name is pronounced they're doing this on purpose they are it's a joke yeah half of them say with a hard g and half of the soft g disagreements with the correct pronunciation often blossom into hard feelings loud arguments and headbutting okay that's funny i get the joke but <laughs> this is not safe to do in an official thing this is unofficial it is hippogriff gif no they're elephants Wait a minute. Okay, then that does change everything. I yeah, think. let me show you a picture of them. Because these guys are all over Spell Jam. They're <sighs> super cute. Astral Elf seems cool. Auto Gnome, that sounds like, I don't know, Auto Zone. Welcome, friends, to the Auto Zone. <laughs> See, look, look at these eyes. That's yeah. a GIF. I love it. Or a GIF. GIF. Do they move? Do they move? Yeah. What do you mean? Like the GIFs. <laughs> did, you know, did you know peanut butter glows in the dark? Really? It can retain light photons if you shine it like a light tape on stage. If you shine a really bright light into it, it'll, it'll glow green. That? Yeah, we do eat it. Well, it's just photosynthesis. There's still plant things Gross. and then it grabs light. Okay, anyways. Anyways. Gross. Um, okay, so beginning us. This is the astral elf, more or less. These are Feywild elves that ventured into the astral plane. And those of you who don't know, we did a whole awesome episode on the astral plane. But you cannot age. Nothing ages within the astral plane. So these elves have lived for thousands upon thousands of years. Yeah, which... like gnomes. Oh, wait, those are auto gnomes. Never mind. Auto zones. Okay, well, yeah, I see uh, the structure here. I understand. Uh, but the astral elves have lived for thousands of years, have seen all sorts of things. That's a whole, it's a whole thing you can role play, you know. Um, the, the sadness of watching your friends die yes. on the zero plane or whatever. Um, they just open the door. The and, cats open the sorry door. Sorry about that. Um, but says that they don't live, uh, which is... Which is very interesting uh, that they just talked about, you know, not talking about ages and too much, putting them either into one camp or the other camp. They say here that if they're not on the astral plane, they live for over 700 years. So when was this made? Astral Elf or this this, Unearthed Arcana? This, Unearthed Arcana. this came out after that book. That, uh, that, uh, okay, article. so they're definitely going to be removing that 750 years if they're staying with their changes. No, this is 5e. Well, the changes came out first. And the changes specifically said, we've been thinking about this for our next bunches of books. So it's going to be reflected. So Jeremy Crawford Jeremy, doesn't agree. Uh, Jeremy Crawford wrote both of these. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I'm so confused. <laughs> Jeremy. Oh, my word. Um, but it's very meaningless. Uh, okay, so the point of these astral elves, they're basically elves. Um, I also do want to point out that they have a feature called Radiant Soul. For those of you keeping track at home. Yeah. Uh, there are three now, count them, three features in D&D &D that are called Radiant Soul. Really? Yes. That's hilarious. Um, so I guess just, uh, I saw a joke, uh, someone on Reddit said that I guess Wizards of the Coast don't own thesauruses, that they just happen to use the same words for everything instead of just looking to see what else fits. They can change it. This isn't official yet. Uh, they also have changed um, or clarified, I should say, how, their tra how the elf trance works. They say you don't need to sleep and magic can't put you to sleep. You can finish a long rest in four hours. You spend those hours in a trance-like meditation during which you remain conscious. There's been lots of controversy on the elvish trance. Um, let me see if I can get really? the, yeah, let me see if I can get the exact wording on the elf uh, that currently exists. Um, yeah, here they say uh, that they meditate deeply, uh, remaining semi-conscious for four hours a day. While meditating, you can dream after a fashion. So a lot of people w would talk about if if when an elf is in the trance, are they conscious because they like do a walk or well, not walk a a watch? Yeah. Um, and this is basically saying uh, that they can't. They yeah. They, well, they're conscious, but they're in a trance like meditation. So it's I would say probably. Well, if, if you've seen they, any depiction of meditation anywhere, it's right. being entirely focused on what you're doing right then and there. So yeah. just like sleeping, it would snap you out of it. True. You can't just, you are basically unconscious. You finish a whole long rest in four hours. That's pretty sick. That is pretty sick. Um, other than that, you're more or less an elf. You get some dark vision stuff. Yada, yada. Kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Elves, yeah but I mean, the not, radiant not soul thing different. right off the bat, you're already getting some, some value. Yeah, you've got to succeed on death stuff. save. You get some HP back. That's not too shabby. Though they removed for a lot of things. Everybody is a variant human now. You can either do plus two to one oh, stat, yes. plus one to one, or yeah. plus three to some, or plus three to It's yeah, something separate. they were referring to. Uh, something I want to, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and address it now. Uh, if they, I think what they need to do, uh, you know what, fuck it, I'll wait till the end. There's only a couple races, so we'll cover all of these, and then I'm going to talk about my big statement. So yeah, the reason I'm saying that is odd, because Radiant Soul specifically affects your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma modifier. 
So that is also suggesting that if you want to be an incredibly effective astral elf, you'll have good stats in those. Right. I'm not opposed to it. I like this, but... No, I don't mind it. It's just like... There's a lot of brains and thoughts going in different brains. directions. But the auto gnome. The auto gnomes. Um, these are gnomes that are not gnomes. They are mechanical beings. But by rock gnomes. Yeah, that were created. Um, so they're kind of like the. What's the one from Eberron? The. I wouldn't know. I only read the tentacle stuff. You had a Eberron. player in it. You had a player in ooh, your game ooh, that was one of these. I'll think on it. Continue. We can look it up, but it was a, basically a robot as well. Um, and this is more or less the same idea, um, just in robot form, uh, or just in gnome form, I should say. Um, you are a construct, which is kind of cool. I always, mm -hmm. I've always I view myself as a construct. Um, We're in the Matrix. Yeah, uh, you are small. That's important because you are an auto gnome. Um, the thing I thought was super cute is because because of how they've changed these creature types and stuff. Constructs can not be affected by what? Or are not affected by what? Are we testing me right now? Yeah. Of course I know what this is. Do you know what it is? Healing spells. Wait, what? Constructs cannot be affected by healing spells. Wait. <laughs> but if you look here, if the uh, in addition, your creator designed you to benefit from common spells to preserve life. So they basically say things that don't affect constructs do affect you. Because otherwise that would suck if you can't be cured. <laughs> Um, I also think it's very cute that they say if someone casts Mending on you, you get to use a hit die. That's, that's fucking cute. amazing. I want more things that use hit die. They just sit there for ages yeah, unless you do a lot of That's super cute, but I, 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 I'm glad that they paid attention to that. Is that is cool. Um, I'd play as that. Yeah. Uh, not Tiefling? Gasp. I don't know. Uh, tiefling suck ass. What about a Gnif? Because it does say here this spell, this spell has no effect on undead or constructs. Uh, Gnif. Uh, yeah, the Gif. The Gif. Uh, these are the big, uh, not big, uh, the big elephants. They are medium. Um, yeah, but they're, I mean, they're broad, tall and broad shouldered folk with hippo like features. Yeah. All right. Storytelling is a rich tradition. Um, Interesting. Well, again, a lot of these creatures are, have been in Spelljammer, are Spelljammer based kind of races and are super cool. So you want to learn a lot more of these. There's some old material that you can go read. Um, but these are typical things. I think the problem with these is, I mean, first of all, compare their trait block to the block of the autonome. Look at that. But first of all, uh -huh. if they're trying to avoid get two traits. making blank, yeah, but they're cool. Making they blanket cool. statements uh -huh. about races entirely. Yeah. Damage dealer. You are like a hippopotamus in a crystal ware shop. <laughs> you are naturally adept at damaging things. Yeah. But what see, what if I want to play a dainty and dexterous hippogriff? No, that you doesn't can't. make any sense for me. No, no, not hippogriff. You can't. Yeah. A gif. Gif. No, no, it doesn't make um, sense. Um yeah, uh, the weird thing too is the the gifs from older editions were super cool, had a lot of really interesting features, and this doesn't have those. Yeah, well, you've got that, so you can reroll one on a damage die for melee attack. You can do it only once per turn, and the hippo build basically the same thing for checks and strength stuff. Yeah, so yeah. kind of weird. Uh, how does he? These are big monkeys, um, literally. They are big simians um, that uh, long ago adapted to live among the tall trees of their home world. Uh, they're natural climbers. They're um, there you I go. Know, good at hiding and stuff. I don't know, um, but they're really interesting. They're super cool. You can imagine them like the Planet of the Ape, smart apes. They're like really, you know they're thinking about things mm -hmm. and they're very clever. Um, they can use their feet to uh, use an object as a bonus action. That's basically what it's saying. Uh, dexterous feet. Um, you can glide, which is cool. Um, so kind of like a, a, a flying monkey. I don't know, what this is, is odd. Flying squirrel? Yeah, flying squirrel. So this is odd. So of course you're thinking like, can they use this to glide? Yes, there's literally an ability that says glide here. Right. So if you don't have heavy armor and whatever on, your mm -hmm. skin membranes can have access to that Whoa. good, good air and your aerodynamic. When you fall, you can kind of shift forward five feet horizontally for every one foot that you fall. So further making those falling encounters even more annoying every time you talk to your DM. Yes. Well, if we're falling 380 feet and the ledge is 900 feet away, uh -huh. can I move forward enough? Take some time there. But that is not what I'm talking about here. Sure. When I was reading this, I'm like, do they take fall damage? They can. Which makes sense, but you have to use your reaction to reduce the fall damage to zero. Why? Why reaction? Do you have to mechanize it, or can you? Just yeah, you got to pull out your your skin I guess. membrane. I feel like that's worded weirdly. It doesn't sit with me right. Hi, Sumi. Come on. I think uh, what's weird to me about these races, we got one, two left. Sorry, but so far, what sticks out to me versus the thing we just read, 
on what the what they're aiming to you know yeah they're trying to unhomogenize but also homogenizing things uh this seems like they're trying they're, they're pushing if you're going to play the gif then you have to have a you have to be a, a strength-based character yeah. more or less if you're playing a, a, a hato z then you gotta be uh, you don't have to be you you probably shouldn't be wearing heavy armor so you got to be wearing anything less than that. So you can probably yeah. can't be a heavy paladin or fighter. Or something. Now, obviously, that's like if you're going in with a min-maxing thing. Could you play a, a gift that was of kind of skinnier of, of a family that eats different meals? So whatever. But you're going to play with that limitation that usually comes with I just with feel like that they're... Because the, the whole point of the stuff we've read of them saying is trying to get away from pushing you into a box. Yeah. But I feel like they're pushing us into different boxes. Yeah. Now. Well, these races are from age old games that uh, I've had them in there and they've been ingrained into this certain races have specialized skills, you know, yeah. uh, and pulling them into fifth edition and then trying to go with that philosophy, they make them like worse. budding heads. And it's like, I wish I had them off the top of my head, but like, the gift ones were, were pretty crazy how much they changed. Yeah. Um, okay. So next race is the plasmoids. Uh, what? And these are the first ooze race. Whoa. So for all of you that want to play cute anime ooze girls, here you go. Yeah, here you go. You can basically, you're kind of like a shape changer. Yeah. You can, you can change your shape to give yourself different things. Um, you, you're, I think at its base, you are a blob, but you can use a, uh, say, reaction. Mm -hmm. No. No action required. To reshape your body to give yourself a head, one or two arms, one or two legs, hands and feet. And then you can revert to a blob. Is there any time limit on this? No, no action required. You can extrude a pseudopod that is up to six that's, inches that's wide and ten action. feet long and reabsorb into it. Cool. Mm, nice. Pseudopods are fun. That's cool. I'd play. That seems uh, really it's fun. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, you can squeeze into small places. You got some dark vision. You can hold your breath. It seems interesting. Yeah, I, I, I find it way more interesting than the... Uh, gif. What is a back. three cream? Excuse and why me? does it sound like some sort of thing I should get from Krispy Kreme Donuts? It does sound yummy, doesn't it? Sorry if that was offensive. Uh, no, the three the three cream is... Um, oh, pull, it's a chameleon. Yeah, let me pull up a cool picture of them. Nice. Because um, it helps oh. to kind of get an idea of what they look like. Yeah, you see these little guys? They're like little chitin creatures. Oh. Let's see if it loads. Look, look at that, that thing. That's cool. Look at that guy. Ooh, that's, look at that that's a good picture. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, these guys are really cool. Uh, they're kind of like a little insectoid, kind of looking, looking mother funsters. Um, but super interesting, super cool. Um, and what they can do is they are have heavy armor carap carapaces, carapies. I don't know what the carapaces. Um, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> the cool thing about these guys, uh, what jumped into my head, is imagine this creature that has four arms, right? And then you're that monk that has the extra arms. You can like pop out like spiritual arms. You got you get so many arms. And then you got someone can cast like fly on you and you're like charging at them and you're like a god. Except what's funny is if you're low level, you can still only punch once a turn. True. So what are you doing with those arms? Um, uh, but you have telepathy. These guys can talk to people what? around you. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, you it's like, why would you play anything else? Yeah, this is stronger than... And, you know, fuck you elves. These guys don't have to sleep. And they can be uh, conscious. Screw yeah. you. So, and there you go. You don't require sleep. And, yeah, but they do have to sleep for the eight hours. So I guess that's you it. still refrain from strenuous activity. All right, so... Can guys I take a guess okay. as to your problem? I don't know. Maybe it's not the problem. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, in the monster book that's coming out, and in 5th uh -huh. edition, or 5.5.5, where they do, yeah. they say there's like 30-plus playable races. Yes, which is that's that is gonna yeah it's gonna be in 2024. They're gonna have, they're gonna basically combine them all, rework everything, and release it. My get my worry is how is superfluous even the word for it? how much of a difference outside of just reskinning your character is this gonna be? Are they all gonna have incredibly unique abilities, or is it gonna be right. like you're playing a three green or you're playing another dude that's an ant version and that's all Basically the difference the is? Idea. You know? Yeah, more or less. Well, yeah, well, where I'm going with this is I think wizards, and this might be sacrilegious for Jeremy Crawford okay. and Matt M Mark Mac Merles, Mac Merles. Mac Merlin. What the hell's his I name? Don't know. Something Merles. Um actually I haven't seen his name on anything lately, which is kind of weird to think about. Um but both of you guys out there, I want you to listen to me real close. Okay. Right. I want everyone out here who's listening to this to clip this and send it to Jeremy Crawford. Listen up closely, Mr. Crawford. I think you need to take a uh, a thread, a, a book, a page, I should say, out of Pathfinder Second Edition's Ooh. 
I know. Isn't it like he's taking a book out of himself though? Because you know they took yeah. a book out of his. Yeah, but book. second edition is now it's its own fresh yeah, book. Yeah, that's true. Um, where I'm going with this is the races in there are first of all are already pretty new. They're not called races; they're called um, lineages. Lineage? Are they called lineages in there? Ancestries. 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 Um, are, are first of all are very unique, very interesting, complex. But what strikes me as super cool, and I feel like D and D could really benefit from this, is making the backgrounds so much more impactful. Yeah. And important decisions. Um, cause sure, if you want to get away from the generalizations, get away from the, the culture and you know, have more cultural diversity and make less things, less, um, less blanketed statements like all oh, drow are evil or all this and that. I, I think the way to fix that problem is to have these fairly generic, I mean, they're not, they're cool races, but fairly generic races, but then have really complex backgrounds, mm -hmm. have a, an elf for sure. Just the base elf is just like every other elf or sure, whatever they want to say. I don't know. Uh, but then you pick the, the courier background and then, so then your dexterity shoots up this much. You get this little feat, you get, you can do these little things. And I think that would fix a lot of their problems. Um, I agree. Will they? No, but I well, right now backgrounds don't Why are backgrounds much. even here? You know, yeah, backgrounds I want them to bring that in. That is one of my favorite parts of Pathfinder. They say. add a couple of cool backgrounds in every adventure book, but those are very specific yeah. to that adventure book. It's nothing more than something that you and your GM will be like, oh, except that's for, cool. And then you for haunted one, haunted forget one. about, oh you know, in later sessions. And then, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's so far backgrounds are very much RP yeah. based and don't really do anything mechanic wise. And I wish there were more mechanics. And mm -hmm. we bring this up every time I talk about backgrounds, I cannot name a single time in my game where players said, hey, I am this background, I'm going to do this feat or something, you know, it just doesn't Yeah, it's never a feat, but sometimes I do let it's you know that I do have that, like, that librarian background and I know where to get information. Sure, yeah, 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 it's yeah, true, yeah. it's true. It's, like um, it. it's nothing significant. So it's though. not to say these things don't exist. They don't have abilities yeah. ingrained into them, but they're just so meaningless and so unimportant that there's no point. They don't ever get brought up. So I think yes. they should be like Pathfinder, be more important. And if you're a big D and D fan and don't know what I'm talking about, go check out our, our Pathfinder um first I think it was our first episode of creating characters kind of stuff. We we talk about these these feats and they're they're very cool, very interesting. Um, oh definitely recommend checking it out. Here's another thing going back What's to our up? spell casting. Uh, for monsters, uh, many NPC monster spellcasters now have a slimmed down spell casting action. So it's still spell casting. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of a little overview of this book that's going to be coming out, Monsters of the Multiverse, and things that they're going to do. There's going to be an ass load of things. There's going to be 250 monsters. Yes. 2022, January 25th. They have a date. Yes, it's, it's coming out early next year. Um it's uh, that is going to be the one that has the thirty agnostic setting yes. agnostic playable D and D races and two hundred fifty monsters. This is going to be a big ass book. Give me a chunk. It's got to be if they're going to fit thirty races. Because for example, uh, Mordenkainen's or Volos has uh, uh, ballpark. I'm going to say max a hundred monsters, yeah. maybe less, maybe a little bit more. I don't think it's much more than that. Right. They have Volos has like f five or six races in there. Um, and then obviously some lore and some stuff. And that's like a 200, 300 page book. Mm -hmm. They're having 30 races and 250 mm -hmm. monsters. That's going to be like gigantic. It's going to be a big dude. And the problem with this book so far, um, at least purchasing wise, they have not released. I mean, it's probably going to be standard price, but if it's bigger, maybe not. Um, they haven't released how much it'll be. Currently, you can only purchase it from a bundle. That's going to have the player's handbook and all the other t Tasha's, Xanathar's. I'm sure you could do like a, a roundabouts cut of like these things are this much. Right. Cur I mean, just saying as of October 14th, 2021 has not been announced. Okay. You can only buy these on Amazon right now to pre-order for $170 for all those books. Mm -hmm. It's called the Rules Expansion Gift Set Bundle. Um, actually, the player's handbook's not even in it. It's just Tasha's, Xanathar's, and this book, I guess. Let me pull Do you think the they're page. trying to, A, increase the amount of quantity of these books that are in the wild, and B, if people buy this in another two years' time, whenever 5.5e comes out, they have all of the reference material? Yeah. Um, the main I ones being Tasha's, Xanathar's, and the PHP. I think the problem with this, though, is there, uh, I mean, again, this is theorizing that, let's say, for example, there might not be a 
actual release of Monsters and Multiverse, you can only buy it through here, then that will be alienating, obviously, the people that already own these books. It's That's like, true. I don't want to pay 150 bucks to pick this up. I'm sure it'll come out. This is probably just something they had to register with Amazon yeah, ahead of time. It's such a weird grouping. It's just the expansions. It's just the Tachas, the Monsters, the Multiverse, and Santa Lives, which actually, if you look at it, I'm sure this is just a mock-up. Same size. Yeah. Same size. Monster of the Multiverse is the exact same size as Xanathar's and Tasha's. Yeah, it's got to be a mock-up. Again, it is a mock-up, but still. So why is that Dungeons & Dragons logo blue? I also find it weird that it's in Monster of the Multiverse is in the middle when it's the last to release. Amazon, what are you doing? <laughs> Anyways, I'm excited about it. It does come it, with a cool... I mean, look at that. It comes with a cool DM screen. Yeah. That is pretty sick. All this is fun and dandy, though, but there's something even more exciting, specifically for me. Okay. It's oh, coming out. Shit, look at that cover. Damn, what is that? That's monster. That looks like oh, to me... Oh, that's the dude that the, pinches thing in the astral plane. Yes, the astral dreadnought. Yeah, the little claw dude pinches your booty. And, and that's Mordenkainen riding some cool horse. Kidding or whatever. So, uh, if you like D&D Beyond... I do. You do? That's good. So, Monsters... Not Monsters. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is currently hiring for the next digital D&D gaming experience. I don't know. Extravaganza. Yes, yes they uh, are. A lot of theories on what this could be. It could be a lot of things. I'm expecting it to be not dissimilar to Larian Studios, their fancy okay. little game, Baldur's Gate, and how that is the best experience that you could have in a fully fledged, basically AAA DD adjacent experience. I am entirely expecting them to try and single handedly begin the digital AAA DD video game let you jump in and say hey guys do you want to play tabletop rpg or do you want to play the DD thing it integrates with your DD beyond stuff all of this works anything you own in there is boarded into that and cool. then this is their online presence this is their turning magic the gathering into magic the gathering magic the gathering arena this is it this this is where they shoot every single kickstarter every single project in the foot that is trying to make the next virtual tabletop <laughs> this is where they kill everything yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Um, so, you know, this is in Austin, Texas, where the studio will be. To be fair, up. since I'm a recruiter, you don't have to necessarily be there. If you're a really kick ass employee and you're like, hey, I just want to work remote, like, okay, we only put it there just because we had to put it somewhere. Unless they need you in house. Unless they do need you in house, but I'm a recruiter, so um, take my word. And so, some of the other theories that I've seen, according to the job descriptions and mm -hmm. job things that are on there, is many people were theorizing this could either just be a video game studio. Mm -hmm. Um, so going along the lines of what Braxton was saying, except not virtual tabletop, mm -hmm. but just be like fun, like Baldur's Gate specific type games or like the older, um, Frostwind Dale type stuff or Icewind Dale, sorry. Um, but they're also, also going into the jobs that were on there. Um, people think that this will be like D and D beyond, but specifically under wizards. Cause technically D and D beyond is through another company. I really hope they don't do that. Um, and that would be a problem. Yes. That, that cause other people are like, would I have to buy my books again? Um, I would imagine they would not be doing this, but it's, you know, still something to be aware of. But if they want to be as sleazy as they possibly could, they Which, will. I mean, it is owned steal. by Hasbro. If they design it well, like if it is just flat out, actually better to use than D and D beyond, everybody will switch to it. Yeah. And they will get their um, money. I mean, if they were smart, they would... I mean, Hasbro has a lot of money. Watsi has a lot of money. They could easily buy out the... Whatever they gave to the company that makes D&D Beyond and, like, allow, like, a transfer if you bought things here. That would be great. Transfer over. Uh, I doubt it would be that, but still, you know, something that could be a possibility. Um, I think the most likely one is either, yeah, VTT or um, uh, just a video game studio. Yeah. And for those of you that aren't, Corporate slaves, partially like I am. Damn. Uh, no, I love my job. But the thing with these companies that are public is they have a lot of stakeholders to be able to answer to and Hasbro to answer to. So the thing that will make them the most money is often the thing that will happen. No matter how much passion these WotC employees have and those of you that get hired for this company, you might not be able to create the most amazing experience to transfer people over from D&D Beyond or give D&D Beyond an offer to work with WotC. Yeah. It's probably not going to happen. That's but what, I will like eat... Blizzard. I, I will drink water if that comes true. I'm not going to. Somebody will on the internet will see this and tell me oh, I okay. have to eat a shoe if I promise to do that. I'm not going to do that. But I'm very hopeful that something great happens because I know the people working at WotC probably want their game to be great or whatever it's Yeah, I mean, I, I think every game studio out there, the base level people, the people at the bottom of the totem pole, people that are putting in the hours to code and craft everything, I think they're very passionate. Oh, about yeah. the game. I think it's work. It's the higher ups, if we look at Blizzard specifically, like to the higher ups is where the passion has died. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, due to the nature of the world and society, 
the under level people who wants to get shot on and mm -hmm. people yell at them how dare you continue to work for blizzard after everything has come out and they still have a passion they still want to make hearthstone good they still want to make world of warcraft have cool quests it's not their fault that there's some sleazy bastards yeah. at their company those people that stick around in those companies because we finally hit that armageddon where people are answering for some of the terrible things that they've done whenever all of those people are are gone the people who saw the new games going on the up and up these are the people that observe the stock market and abuse it mm -hmm. like that. you know if you do that absolutely fine but if you see that video games are getting more popular and you go join a video game company and they hire you because of how good you are at data and analytics not because you're passionate for video games those are the people that have ruined the industry yeah. that don't try to understand their engineers and don't have passion for it at all they just want money so i'm a little i'm a little bitter about those types of people but once they're all gone those that remain will hopefully make it a better place for True. all gamers. True, and we we like to you know we like to shit on Christopher Perkins and Jeremy Crawford every so often. But at the end of the day, I think they really are passion. I think they really do care about Five E and Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. Uh, otherwise, they would not still be here. I mean, we wouldn't some be of those playing guys, their game if we didn't like their game. But some of those guys have been working on D and D for like the majority of their lives. I mean, yeah. they'd be long gone if they were, if they weren't having their Absolutely. enjoying themselves. So I, I think they really care about this product, and I'm looking forward to see what they uh, bring into Five Point Five E, baby. You know, you've got Foundry, you've got all these virtual tabletops. I'm really hoping that it is one to finally, finally bring. I could see them wanting to launch it with a 5.5e. E. That is true. That's a few years. Maybe that's from what now. they're building they'd, it they'd, for too. They'd have the time for it. Yeah, and thinking about it, like the bridge between having this is a really weird comparison, but okay. a mouse with a cord that is that is completely attached to it. You know, it's not wireless. Okay. It took a while for people to actually start saying, "Okay, wireless mouse are." mice are faster or as fast as these wired mice. And we haven't had that moment for D and D where the digital side has felt declunkified enough yeah. and as good of an interface as just being in person. And I'm so interested to see the moment that that finally happens. And I think this is a, as good of a chance as we'll get, if not those people that are Kickstarters working their asses off to try to make their passion projects come true. Yeah. <laughs> I feel for those Kickstarter. They gotta they bust got a big their booth. ass. They gotta uh, get yeah, it out yeah. quick so mm -hmm. people can start checking it out. Absolutely. They gotta do something different too than what Watsy will be pulling to the table. Yeah, so. like Tailspire. Ooh, be careful. But that's with, pretty much know, everything. With that said, that's 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 all we we know so far. Grant, we left you know little small tidbits out and here and there because they're they're planning on releasing more books and for five point five e and yeah. uh, in twenty twenty four they said. Um, but you know, it's so far away, it's subject to change, so probably not worth covering too much. But I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see them as we get closer um, and to see these changes reflected in these next few books, to see how, if our worries will come true. Mm -hmm. um, they have announced the next adventure module, which is the Critical Role, something Nether Realm, yeah. something book. It's going to be out sometime next year. Um, and the art I, looks so sick. It does. I got hyped at first because I saw well, I saw the advertisements like epic. Like I saw epic mentioned mm -hmm. multiple times, um, and so in my head I immediately was like, epic level campaign. I was super hyped. I was like, we we've wanted this for so long. Matthew Mercer's bringing it to us. Praise praise Matthew Mercer. Uh, but no, it's just levels two no, to twelve. It's, it's epic, like Dream from Minecraft, doing yeah, a three sixty no scope cool. spin on a leaf to land in the water below him without Whoa, dying. It's a deep cut. That's a deep cut. Uh, but yeah, it's it's epic in scope and scale, I yeah. would imagine. Uh, but sounds very interesting. Sounds very cool. Uh, I'm, I'm intrigued to see uh, like the nether realm they're talking about is like a mix between the far realms and like the hells or something. Sounds very interesting. Perfect place for a tiefling warlock. Yeah, it is. Uh, so I'm excited to see what they pull with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's everything they've announced uh, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I don't think there was much else in the way that there's a lot of stuff to work on behind the scenes so if any of you do get hired don't break your nda but do break oh this was delayed by the way if yeah. you guys weren't aware by now big sad but hey delay as much as you want it comes out in the 26 i think so we've got some time until we got to do a big poofy review yeah while well, you talk i'm gonna double check that all right so i don't know i mean that's that's pretty much everything we had going on we took a little bit of a break so thanks everybody for the patience that you've had I just kind of yeah. Over the next couple of weeks, we had a really nice comment or two on, on like Twitter saying that we quickly rose to some people's favorite spots and their like D&D yeah. re revolving Thanks. content that they consume. I appreciate um, that. It's been a stressful week for a lot of us, for a lot of people in the world, but in our world. Yeah, as you can see, I look spiff and span because I was doing some counseling today. I was yeah. a counselor for some Giving clients. Some you know, DMs are kind of like counselors. 
Yeah, kind of. Kind of are kind of. counselors. But if you're interested in giving us a little follow on social media, that is at Dungeon Crawl Pod, both on Twitter and Instagram, we're trying to interact a little bit more in the community. And if you right now listening or watching are in the D&D community and you're on Twitter, give us a follow or literally just add us and tweet us and say, hey, I like your stuff. Or, hey, let's talk. I heard your opinion. Or let's just be mutuals and hang out. Because I recently learned how to use Twitter, so I'm down to clown. Let's go. Uh, Outside of that, if you want to talk to us uh, via the email, thedungeoncrawlpod at gmail.com is our email. Again, that is thedungeoncrawlpod at gmail.com because I mumbled. But hopefully you heard because the mixer sounds pretty good. Outside of that, I mean, we got a Discord that's in the link tree as well. We've got Uh a really, really wonderful community in there. A lot of people that chat uh, pretty frequently, uh, about like 20 of us that are decently active and four or five games we were running curse of or call of cthulhu that is ha- call of curse, of, curse cthulhu. of cthulhu we're running one of those on the 15th and i think uh uh, I we'll think it's 15th, 16th. We'll be watchable for people that we'll want watchable. to. I so if you Joss was happy with that. Yeah. I think if you jump into the Discord, you'll be able to watch that on that day and see uh, how Ryan and I play together. In a yeah, game. and we're probably going to be covering our impressions and thoughts on it next week. Yeah. So that's unless, our unless some crazy D&D uh, news drops, but so, ideally we're going to be covering Call of Cthulhu next week. So join in there. Uh, this is Sumi. and oh, this, this is Usagi right here That's on the table Usagi. if you're watching the video. Sumi is in my lap. She doesn't have a tail, so her name is a little bunny. But yeah, that's uh, everything I've got. Look at that link tree. And uh, final thing here. It's not everything, actually. Our patrons, oh, oh, you yeah. stuck around through the little break here. Anybody who subs to us on Patreon helps us afford all the little upgrades and movements we got going on. We need to fill this room with merch so that the echo <laughs> goes away. So those of you that are supporting us right now, specifically those in the dungeon crawlers and above tier squid still Shout hanging out. in. Thank you so much. What a guy. Off to you. Uh, yeah. Final thing, final closing thoughts before we end today. I'm going I'm to do a little different. Uh, sometimes, you know, we tell fun, funny stories. Yeah. Sometimes we drop some, some, call to action more or less uh, but today i'm going to talk about cats um so those of you uh who've been following us for and know that i have a cat named yeah. jd he likes popping in in the, in the broadcast when we're back at my place and now we got two other cats that like to sunbathe in front of lights and stuff um <laughs> well when i first came over here today uh this cat in particular <laughs> uh, we got, oh my god i know where this is going do you know where this is going go ahead yeah uh this cat in particular um, I was specifically, um, you know, was hanging out and loving on, you know, jumping around. Or like a baby. Uh, like a baby like this? A cradle her. Oh, cradle. Like, like her back, her, yeah, upside down. Oh, I gotcha. I got it's not very good okay. at holding her yet. It's okay. Uh, yeah. JD doesn't like when I do that, so I'm not comfortable with it yet. Um, but Braxton went to go feed them, right? And they were screaming and yelling and guttural screams, like guttural. Um, and in my time... Uh, I've watched, I can't remember what his name is, um, but he has a show called Dog Whisper. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Nah, I don't think I have. Uh, great show. Uh, I don't think it exists anymore, but great show. My mom and I used to watch it all the time. Um, but there's a equivalent called Cat Whisper, which is a terrible show. Absolutely terrible. Uh, God awful show. Uh, but uh, in my time of watching Dog Whisper and having a cat for so long, I have learned how to speak feline. And I... <laughs> want to let everyone know out there that while the cats were being fed by Rax and they were screaming guttural, guttural <laughs> screams, they were not saying feed me, surprisingly enough. They were saying to go to Apple Podcasts there and rate us five stars on, I, on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and leave a review, a very nice lengthy review, and say, Sumi or Usagi, send me. We would appreciate it. It really would help us out a lot. Thanks They've for- been Usagi and Sumi. He's been Ryan. Thanks for... To, oh, he's Braxton. Hell yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks for crawling with us. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, being patient yeah. during these times. And hopefully, uh, maybe Thursdays are, uh, I know today's not Thursday, but hopefully Thursdays will be a better time slot for you to watch the podcast. Yeah. If you liked tuning in on Tuesdays for your commute, I apologize, but now you can just listen to it on your commute on Thursday instead. Yeah. And Dungeon Chronicles will be coming back soon where we're uh, hoping to be eliminating some of the uh, echo and noises in this room Before so that we get back it will in there, sound it's better. A lot. Because um, right, for that, we don't use these, these microphones, these up-close and personal microphones. We use these shotgun microphones, which catch a little bit more of the echo. Uh, so once we can deal with that, we'll be back on. And we'll be in person. Look at this. We got a map here and everything. So it'll yeah, be, it be lots of fun. 
Yeah, we did a little, nice little test run with one of our remote players that just moved in our IRL game. And that camera, you can zoom in like all the way on the battle yeah. map. It's pretty sick. She is done. Cats have a time bomb. Whenever it's gone, they're done. But anyway, Speaking of done. We are. We'll see you next week for some Cthulhu no, madness. Man. It's my time to shine. Peace. I can't do it. I got a cat in my life. Bye. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm just going to stare slowly as oh. the episode ends. It's zoom, over. zoom in on my face. It's not over. Oh, now zoom in on Sumi's face. Oh. Look at him. It's the face of death. Goodbye. <laughs>